Life's pretty simple, you know. See you later. It's long periods of waiting broken up by brief moments of change. The moments of change... Mum! ...define you. And that'll be the only thing you're remembered for. Hi, I'm Ryan Purdy for the Fan Carpet and we're here for the premiere of 100 Streets. It's three interconnecting, likely interconnecting stories um, from sort of three different social classes. Uh, Idris Elba plays an ex-England rugby captain who's kind of having difficulties dealing with life after giving up playing and retiring and his marriage to his wife Gemma Arterton is sort of collapsing. Uh, we have Charlie Creed Miles playing a cabbie with Kirsten Waring as his wife and they're trying to adopt a child and the difficulties that go with that and then sort of fate intervenes and sends their life in an unexpected direction. And then we have a young little kid off the estate, a small time drug dealer who wants to become an actor or a writer or a performer. Um, and so it's a struggle for him uh, and how he gets out of that little life, that life of crime. It's quite exciting. I mean, it's a bit of a story behind my involvement. Originally, it was in a in a full scene of the film, um, and then edits happened and various things happened, and I ended up being edited out of the film. But they loved it, and they were like, "We don't want to lose it from the film, so we'd like you to do the music video, and we'd like you to to be the official song." And so I'm not, I can't sit there and go, "Oh yeah, that's me," but it, the rest of just having the involvement is just amazing for me. He's a he's a guy who's been brought up on the wrong side of the tracks. He's also a bit of a fantasist. Um, he, he 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 sort of sees himself as as a sort of godfather type, although he's really he's a petty criminal. Um, he he's he, 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 amoral if not he, immoral. It's not very nice. Um, but you know um, his his world is the is he's a product of his environment and he's a product of the way he's chosen to. You know the, the decisions he's made in his life. Well, I don't want to give anything away, but he's, um, you know, he's, he's, uh, he, he's, he's a criminal, and he's, uh, and, and he's not afraid. But more than that, he's, uh, he's a bully, you know, and he's. Um yeah, he's not, he's not a nice person. This guy called George, he's a black uh, cab driver, um, Londoner, and um, he's been trying for a baby for a long time with his wife Kirsten, who played by Kirsten Waring, um, and to no success, unfortunately. So they've got that going on at home, and then one day at work, George has um, something happens at work, and um, it, it, it uh, kind of changes their lives. No, there's very, there's very little um, interaction actually between the, there's three or four kind of story strands yeah. and there's not a huge a lot of uh, cross fertilisation going on. So you're going to people pass each other in the street and it's kind of, it's kind of like that. Somehow it, it, it plays, it plays very well. You don't kind of notice. It feels, it feels, it feels natural. It's very clever. It kind of, it, it plays out nicely. You don't kind of feel like you're chopping, chopping, chopping. You kind of, I think, what, I think the trick is that you're rooting for all the characters from very early on and so therefore you kind of you you know you you, you kind of you want to know what's good what, what's what's going to happen to them all and how they're all going to how they're all going to how it's all going to pan out it was great it was great and i mean filming with idris elba and Gemma arterton and you know actors of that character and that that ilk is a real privilege and a, and a pleasure and an honor and it makes your job as a director very very easy to have actors like that you know I um, covered Ralph McTell's classic Streets of London, um, did a really stripped back version and it's now the official song of the film for, Streets of, uh, for 100 Streets, so it's, um, yeah, it's, it's all really exciting. We did a video <laughs> film that put some scenes from the film in, in the video, kind of like an Ellie Golding, Fifty Shades of Grey-esque thing, um, and so it's got scenes of Idris and Emma, Gemma and all sorts of people in there. And and a little old me. <laughs> we, we actually did two edits of the video. We, we did all the locations that were in the film um, and then we thought, you know, we're going to strip it back even more um, and we went and recorded it in Dean Street Studios, um, the famous Dean Street of London. Um, and so it's just me basically just playing the piano and singing with scenes from the film intertwined with that. And um, yeah, and I'm really happy with how it's come out. That came out last week. 
Um, and now the song's on the soundtrack album, which is coming out on Friday. And Warner Records are releasing that, so that's even more exciting. We, we just recorded the song and pitched it. Um, one of the producers that I work with, James Radford, he was music supervisor on the film. Um, and so we put basically just put it forward to them and they, they loved it. They fell in love with it and they were like, no, we want this. We want this to be the official song of the film. And I was like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> My love of London, well I'm a Londoner, um, I'm from a different part of London, because this is obviously, this is kind of Chelsea and Battersea, but it looks so beautiful on camera, it's really lovely, I mean shots of the bridges and Battersea Park and Belgravia and Chelsea, it, it, it looks amazing, uh, you know. It... We, we very much set it in Chelsea and Battersea, so it is very much around and so, and we were looking, we did film nearly everything in Chelsea and Battersea, so you'll recognise Battersea Park and you'll recognise, um, you know, Peter Jones on the King's Road and you'll recognise nightclubs from Chelsea. So, you know, it's definitely very much a, a Chelsea, Battersea film. Um, and uh, it's not a part of London. I don't think you see a lot on screen. Um, you see the East End and you see maybe the city and Docklands and you see tourist London, the Houses of Parliament and Big Ben. But you don't see Chelsea and Battersea and it's a fascinating area. Well, I think it's, it's a very truthful portrayal of the sort of type of cross-section of, of classes and races and uh, 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 people in, in London. It feels like an authentic slice of real London life to me. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I've met yeah, I've met many people like him in my life, but I mean, and, and many of them are charismatic. No, I don't know. <laughs> No, he's very, you know, he, I mean, he, he has a sort of charisma about him. He's not, he's not necessarily the sharpest tool in the box, and uh, there's an element of humour in it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think, I, 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 I really enjoyed Ben, and I'd love to see, I would have loved to have seen more of him, and he's only in one scene, so it's, it's quite the cameo, but, um, no, it was good fun, you know, I had a great time. A lot of the people in the film might be scared post-Brexit, because, you know, it's a very diverse cast, and uh, I wonder if they'd all be allowed to stay if, if, uh, if the Brexiteers had their way. Uh, but you know, it's, it's one of the great things about this country, it's one of the great things about London in particular, that it's so diverse and obviously it's very difficult to capture the entire diversity of London in a 92 minute film, but I think we've given it a good go and so we have people from all sorts of different backgrounds and walks of life and cultures and creeds um, and colours all intermingling and that's what's great about London, isn't it? You have cheek by jowl, people of all different classes and, and races and creeds and cultures and political persuasions and they you can have two million pound houses on one side of the road you can have a big sprawling council estate on the other side of the road and to me that's quite a, a unique factor feature of London that you don't may possibly get in other very big cities for me it's a film that is as much about London and living in London and, and living in a big city as it is about a film just set in London you know London is very much to use a cliche character in the film the Thames is the heartbeat of, of the film a lot of scenes take place along the banks of the Thames so it's great to be here tonight of the BFI, literally within spitting distance of the Thames to, to premiere the film, you know? Singing. Singing's my way to go. I'm bringing out my own album um, early, new, early in the new year and uh, it's all kind of onwards and upwards from here, really. Well, I'm about to do a play next year um, in the West End. Uh, a Moliere play, very different to, to this. Um, uh, it's a, a play directed by Sean Foley. He's a wonderful uh, comic director, comedy director. And uh, yeah, it's a Molière called The Miser. I think it's a little bit the Garrick. Um, so that's what's coming up next. I would say don't ruin it, don't let it die. It's one of the great things this country has is a sense of tolerance and a sense of openness to diversity and a sense of live and let live. Um, and I think that diversity is, I think, up on our screen in 100 streets. It's certainly on the streets of London. It's in every street in London. And, and I would say don't let that go because it's what makes London, I think, the greatest city in the world. Thank you for tuning into the fan carpet. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. It's very hard for us to find our place in the world.